we will remember the name of the Lord. For his name is a strong tower. name is a strong tower. It is a mighty fortress. Hallelujah. Anybody want to run into that name tonight? Come on, lift your hands. Let's glorify the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. To the depths of my soul, I give all, all to you. With every breath that I breathe, every song I choose to sing, I give all, all to you. Through every low, through every high. I will trust, I will trust you through every storm, through every trial, I will trust, I will trust.
What's his name? Come on, won't you let the rest of the world know? What's his name? One thing for sure, God has never failed us. He's never left us. We're not stranded. We're, we're not without hope. God is here. God is in this place. Do y'all believe that? And I know that there are those in here that are struggling. I know that the times have been rough. And I know that sometimes sickness and, and all manner of things come upon us. But one thing for sure, and we can never forget this, is that he is greater than them all. Come on, I know that was simple, but he is greater than them all. So if you have an issue, a circumstance, whatever it is, a sickness, a disease, I want you to step out to the aisle and I want you to shout with your greater than them all shout. Come on. Somebody missing an opportunity right now. We're going to call you down here for prayer. But what would happen if you shouted before you came up here? What would happen if you let totally go before you stepped up here? Come on, he's an on-time God. They're just looking for some people with some on-time faith. Now faith. Now faith. Lift your hands his way. Now faith. Right now faith in the name of Jesus. Every hand of the enemy is broken. Every attack of the enemy is destroyed. Come on, there's some people up here that have made their mind up. I'm not leaving out of here the way I came in. Every sickness, every disease, every frustration. Come on, God is an answer right now. I'm believing it. I'm receiving it. I'm declaring it. And oh yes, I'm decreeing it. By the power of Jesus, every stronghold must come down. We believe it. Do we believe it? Do we believe it? Don't wait till the battle. Do we believe it? Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait till the battle. Do you receive it right now? I don't need the doctor's report. I got it right now. I'm not waiting on the amen for my neighbor. I got it right now. My mind's made up. My mind's made up. I'm not turning back. I'm not giving up. I'm not throwing in the towel. Oh, I wish I had about three, four, five people. They would just get ugly for God right now. I wish I had two, three from the back. They would shout their way to the front. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. You ain't got all night. There you go. There you go. Come on. Come on. Hey. Y'all better hear me. I'm not just saying that the chains are breaking right now. Why y'all stop shouting? What was is no longer. What was is no longer. Come on. Ah. Oh. Oh. Come on. Come on. In Jesus' name. 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 In Je 30 more seconds. In Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name. It, come on. In Jesus, anything's possible. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. It's almost gone. Two, one, one. when you make up your mind that we come to service to worship God miracles happen miracles happen miracles happen miracles happen Come on, you're not disturbing nobody by making that kind of noise. Maybe the devil, maybe hell. I believe we're going to have excuse me church tonight. Excuse me, get out of my way church tonight. Y'all believe it? If you're blocking me in the aisle, get out of my way. I'm going to run you over. I'm warning you now. Amen. I'm believing that's going to happen tonight. I'm believing that with everything that's in me. The Lord is going to do something wonderful. There is power in this house. There is power in this house. Amen. Next Sunday, next Sunday, don't lose, don't, don't lose the worship. I know you're paying attention to announcements. But don't let the announcements steal what God is trying to do for you. Next Sunday, a big service. Every service is a big service, by the way. A big service. Our all-nation service. Are y'all ready for it? You're inviting everybody from every nation that you run into? Glory, hallelujah. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do. Amen. Make sure that you have, amen, have gotten yourself together to wear what you're going to wear. Amen. And we're going to have a grand time all day. All morning service, 2 o'clock service, and then we're going to come together and we're just going to have a Holy Ghost party, amen, and at the p.m. service. So we're looking forward to a great time the entire time, amen. We worship around here in many fashions, forms, amen. They're all to the Lord Jesus Christ, not to man, but to God. And one of those ways we worship is in giving, in giving. That is worship. Touch your neighbor and say, that is worship. That is, that is part of worship, Amen. And so often we give, we give like we just hurry up and do it and get and sit down and do that. But really, if we can apply the same principles to worship when we're giving, then we would understand what God says when he says I, that he what, loves a joyful giver. Is that how it goes? And so that giving right there, when you're joyful, when you're joyful, amen, you're not doing it like this and running back. You're giving it, but you shout. You're going back to you. See, see. You don't wait till you get the blessing. You sow it, and then you shout about it. Somebody will get that principle tonight. You sow it. It's now in God's hand. And His promises are yea and amen. Y'all believe that? So lift your hands. I invoke the spirit of Goshen upon you. I'm going to see if you believe it. 
I invoke the spirit of Goshen upon you. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Come with your tithe and your offering.
place to hide this weary soul I need it whole I tried with all my mind But I couldn't win the fight I was slowly drifting Into the night Just when I ran out of hope I met a man I didn't know And he told me that I was high
should praise him. If your faith isn't very high, maybe this kind of put a lid on your praise. But if your faith is high, you ought to give him high praise. You ought to lift up the name of Jesus. somebody come on I'm looking at some of your faces get the countenance of faith on your face and believe that the Lord is about to do a miracle in your life tonight. Whoa! Thank you, Jesus. I give it ten more seconds. I'll give you eight more to get warmed up. God, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands one more time. Not, 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 like, not like you're clapping for me. Like you're clapping for him. And lift your voice. And shout the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight, shout amen. Praise God, you look great. You're a sight for sore eyes. I'm glad to be back at Greater Faith on Sunday night. And I, I would say there's no telling what the Lord's going to do tonight, but His Word tells us what he's willing to do, what he will do. Amen. Everybody say, I believe it. Praise God. Powerful service this morning in Dayton. And I know it was a powerful service here today. I believe one baptized, I think they got the Holy Ghost, one baptized at Hope, one filled with the Holy Ghost. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for it. I was trying to share those numbers on Thursday, but I think that makes 156 this year. Baptized in Jesus' name, we thank the Lord. And we've got we've got the special weekend with Charles Robinette coming in September, and we've got all kind of special things here and there. And I I believe it's going to be 250, 300, or more baptized in Jesus name this year you believe that praise God praise God I, I, I just want to thank you again for being so patient in times of my absence and it's it's kind of it's kind of working in several ways in a positive direction because you're allowing it to but it's allowing some things to happen here that may not be able to happen here with me in the building and I'm thankful for the leaders that are stepping up. Of course, always our, our pulpit ministry team doing such a fabulous, powerful, anointed job preaching the word to us. I appreciate Pastor Nichols this morning uh, preaching a powerful word. I got to watch that on the way home. And I'm excited for everything that the Lord 
that the Lord is doing this afternoon. I was headed out of the building because, um, well, Bishop Tom Foster is going to be in Dayton next Sunday, and I have All Nations Sunday, and so it worked out well, but Brother Smith had not mentioned anything past this Tuesday night, so I was working with the assumption the last couple of weeks that we were we were going to close out at least for a time, a season. So I said it out. I said, "Now we're are we done? We're done Tuesday night, right?" He said, "What? Uh, what? Wait, hold no, hold on a second. And I said, uh, "What? You not?" He said, "Well, I, I I'm not done. I don't know if you're done." Uh, I said, "Well, I don't know. Are you wanting me here?" He said, "I I want you here." So I I'm not trying I'm not trying to stay away, and I'm not trying to. Um, get into some kind of trouble for dereliction of duty. Um, I am praying and covering this church. I'm up here during the prayer chain throughout the week and counseling people and returning phone calls and visiting and meeting with people and visiting with our staff, meeting with our staff and, and other leaders preparing. And uh, so the only time you're not seeing me is on Sunday morning. And uh, if you can just be patient, just a little while longer, the Lord is doing something special in Dayton, Ohio, and I'm very, very thankful for it. So I don't know if that's what you wanted to hear. Some will go out of here celebrating tonight. Others will go out of here angry. Uh, the rest of you don't care. But anyway, I, I'm just thankful to be a part of such a, such a great team of, of ministers here on this platform. As I announced, I announced Thursday night, Brother uh, Levi Garnett is over there against the wall in the corner. Uh, went this past Wednesday, he officially became a resident of New Albany. And um, this is uh, bigger than you think that it is. Obviously, he is, he is dating our, our daughter, and um, that's, all, that's all well and fine. Um, but the Lord is using Levi in a multifaceted way throughout music and technology and photography and teaching Bible studies and winning souls and he's got a, a call to pulpit ministry on his life and he is not here to take anybody's spot but um, we do believe he's here in the in the will of God and with him this weekend are two very three very special people I can't can't leave the champion out he's seven going on 27. His name is Colton. If that gives you an idea. So, uh, anyway, my man Colton down there, can you give me a thumbs up? Oh, he's going to act all shy now. Sure, sure, we believe that. We believe that you're shy. Amen. But this is Levi's uh, brother, and we're glad that Colton can be with us. And then Pastor and uh, First Lady... Stacy Garnett from um, Asheboro, North Carolina. They are some very, very uh, special uh, people. Been in the assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ a very long time. And if if I'm not mistaken, forgive me if I get this wrong, but I believe you're the district superintendent of the Southeast District. And um, so uh, they are uh, very sought after and and. Um, very well respected uh, I have talked to three or four people in the ALJC and you mentioned the last name Garnett and everybody knows exactly who they are and everybody has positive things to say and um, this is our first time meeting them in person last night at, at dinner and we had such a great a great time and I know it's bittersweet for them um, I did not go behind Pastor Garnett's back or anything, but this was this was his and Levi's decision for for Levi to be here. And um, uh, what did I say? Okay, all right, it, it wasn't hers, but but they were telling us whether they meant it or not. They were at least saying we're so very happy for him to be here. And I don't know what they said when they left, but but anyway, but uh, I, I imagine and. You, you know you know it's tough and Levi was such an integral part of everything that was happening there 
in the church. And uh, part of it was um, a job situation. And Levi was, the, the job situation is tough down in Asheboro. And he, he found he, within just 48 hours of looking, he got a couple of uh, interviews here in town. And that happened very, very quick. And he's come here and got himself an apartment. And so we are, we are honored to have him. But we are also very, very honored to have Brother and Sister Garnett with us tonight. Amen. Amen. We're, we're, looking forward, we're looking forward to a, a long uh, friendship. But Brother Garnett, I'd love for you to take that chair right there. And uh, you'd be a little bit more comfortable right right there in the front. Uh, he's, he'd rather be in the in the background, but but uh, I'd like for him to come on out now. Um, please don't. I have a word and I I have a message, but please don't make me turn it into a sermon. The closer we get to the coming of the Lord, it is it is increasingly more important. For the church to rest upon the word of God as it stands. Not, not spouting off old wives tales and um, you know the things that, that we give. Because God, God needs to be propped up apparently. So we have to make excuses for why God has not answered prayers. And God has not done certain things. But the word of God standeth sure it is forever settled. And heaven and earth shall pass away, but he said, my word shall never pass away. It is once it was spoken and through the mouth of holy men of God. And it was written upon the pages of the book that we hold in our hands today. It was divinely ordained of God. There are no contradictions in it. And to him that believes the word of God as it is stated will receive the dividends and the blessing that the Word of God promises that they will receive. And um, so the, the topic that the Lord has given me tonight is not a stranger to this church. I, I feel like the Lord has, you know, given me something to come at it from a little different perspective. But really, it's the, it's the same message. And... He's still wanting to do the same things. And there are needs in this house tonight. Is that right? Yeah. There are needs in this house. Ra raise your hand if you raise your hand if you have something in your life that only God can take care of. Raise your hand real high. Now don't don't raise your hand if you don't have any big stuff like that. Okay. So we have gathered here in this building for the Lord um, to do what he does best now there are some things that we have to learn some lessons that we have to learn and some things that we must suffer in, and there are trials and, and tribulations that, that we must walk through um, but healing is promised to us as a part of redemption don't, now, I know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say a few things here at the outset that you know, you know already, but I, I don't know if we believe it yet. The same God that forgave you is the same God that will heal you. Same God. And so there, there's so much, so much that I want to say, and I'm going to, I'm going to do, um, do my best to stand, stay on topic. But, um, you know, when I, read, when I read my text tonight, you're going to go, oh, oh really? Wow, that's, thanks for that big revelation. This is what we've been waiting for. Uh, you'll understand here in a minute. But really, uh, it, is, it is the answer to everything. And you can walk out of here tonight with the greatest touch from God that you, you've ever had before. If you just, just stand for about 30 seconds here. Let me get these two verses out. The 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence, everybody say the evidence, of things not seen. Now pay attention to verse 2. For by it, by what? By faith. By it, the elders obtained a good report. 
Bible says a good report makes the bones fat. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. I want to receive a good report from heaven tonight. And the, and the only way that I can do that is, is to, keep, to keep living my life by faith. Complete faith. And the prayers that don't get answered today, I'm going to wake up tomorrow with the same measure, if not greater, faith to be ready to receive those things from the Lord. So I, 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 want, to, I want to preach to you tonight about making evident the evidence. Making evident the the evidence. Father, we thank you for your great anointing that's in this building. There's enough power in this building to heal every sickness, to deliver every person that's in bondage, to fill every sinner with the Holy Ghost, to restore every backslider, to encourage every saint, to do something that our eyes have never beheld before. On a Sunday night in the month of August in the year 2022, God, you can do it tonight. And if you believe that, say in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, making evident the evidence. God wants wants you to discover that you have power over the devil. He wants you to discover that you have power over the devil. The devil does not have power over you unless you give it to him. If you don't give it to him, he don't have it. And if you put your faith in God, you have power over the devil. And he wants you to know that you have power over sickness. And that you are a victor. You are victorious. And that you are more than a conqueror. And that you can rebuke disease and sickness and see the symptoms melt melt away now the the scripture gives us a litany of stories in which Jesus and the early apostles prayed for people of all manner of sickness and disease and I will tell you that here tonight I have already exercised my, my faith I've had a condition in my body for about 15 months And my wife is aware of it. To my knowledge, it's nothing serious, but it is a little aggravating. And um, and so tonight, I got Pastor Jackson and Pastor Nichols and Brother Josh Sturgeon, and I told them a little bit about it. And uh, it's not real personal, but I told them about it, and I said, it ends tonight. I'm done with it tonight. Now, I say that, I say that because you have to come to that place as well. As long as you're okay with the condition of your body, you you will stay the same way that you are. So somebody needs to decide tonight it ends. It's over. We're reversing what the doctors and medicine have told us, and we're pushing back on that, and we're going to let... We're going to let Jesus not only be our redeemer, but we're going to let him be the great physician. So Jesus, Jesus did so many miracles. As a matter of fact, the Bible said that, that the world cannot contain the books that would catalog all of the miracles that Jesus did in his short three and a half year ministry. And in most cases, Jesus did not heal anyone until after he had observed some act of faith for healing. Now, I'm going to tell you why we have problems with some people praying for us. And the reason is because we know that we lack faith. So we need somebody that's got massive faith to come in and do it for us. We need, we need somebody that's gifted in that area, that has that healing ministry, somebody that we have confidence in so that they can make up for our faithless deficiency. Is that right? And so 
that's not really how Jesus responded most time. And such was the case with a centurion at Capernaum. The centurion said, I am a man under authority and I have authority. And in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 10, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. Everybody say great faith. faith. Not in Israel. I have not found so great faith. Now, I wonder if Jesus was here in flesh, would he look at the church today? Would he look at this church and say, I have found more faith from outsiders than I have from the people of God? I, just, I wonder would he say that. I'm not saying he would, but here's the part that we leave out in verse 11. He said, I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. Everybody say, that's the lake of fire. Say, that's the lake of fire. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In other words, the people that should be exercising their faith were not exercising their faith. And he said, I, I've not found this kind of faith in, in all of Israel. This man is so confident in my ability and, and my spiritual authority and what I am capable of do through capable of doing through my father's anointing and power. I can do nothing of myself, but he is so confident that he said, you don't even have to come to my house. Just speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. And so Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way, as thou hast believed. I want you to notice that. As thou hast believed. So be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed the self same hour. Now, I appreciate all of us that have long-term faith and, we're, and we're, we have faith in the incremental power of God, and the siphoning virtue of God. If we can get a little faith now, God will siphon a little virtue now and we'll get a little bit more now uh, tomorrow and he'll siphon a little bit more. I, I appreciate those that believe that way. But Jesus is looking for the kind of faith that will impress him to the point where he said, I, I've not found faith like this. I, I've not ever found faith like this, and he was healed. We need some self-same hour miracles. I, I know that we can pray tonight, God can do it tomorrow, but we need God to do it tonight. Is that right? Clap your hands if you believe that. Such was, such was also the case in the man that was sick of the palsy, the Bible said that there were men that, that carried him on his stretcher and they were trying to get him into the house. And when they could not because of the crowd and the press, they, they went up to the roof and they tore the roof off and they, they lowered him down to Jesus. The Bible said in Mark chapter 2 and verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, everybody say, Jesus saw it. When Jesus saw their faith. But let me ask you a question. If you were bedfast, would you allow four men to carry you up onto a roof and then let you down, caught and all, through a hole in the roof? You'd be saying, put, put me down, put me down. What are you doing? Put me down. You're going you're gonna to turn me off of the stretcher. You're going you're gonna to cause me to fall off of the roof. What is your problem? I, I believe there was something in that man laying on the stretcher that when they told him what their plans are, how about we pick you up? How about we take you up there and we'll pull the roof off if we had to and we'll let you down right at the feet of Jesus. What do you think about it? I guarantee you that man on the stretcher said, let's do that right now because tonight it stops. Today it stops. I'm not going another day in this condition. Oh boy. 
Amen. Somewhere there was faith. There was faith in that man that was placed in front of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we learn that faith is better seen than heard. In the 11th chapter, of that or 11th verse of that same chapter, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And the Bible said immediately. Everybody say immediately. Immediately, immediately he arose. Some of you need to hear the word of the Lord tonight. I'm not preaching from Aesop's fables. I'm preaching the word of God. And I'm telling you the healer is in the house tonight. And I'm telling you the deliverer is in the house. I'm not not just trying to preach a sermon, but I'm telling you the way maker is in the house. The banker, the lawyer, whatever you need, the peace speaker, whatever you need him to be, He is in the house tonight. And when he tells you to take your bed up and walk, you can't just sit there and look at him. Now, there was a lot of hands that went up. There's not as many people on their feet right now as hands that went up that said, I have a need. But immediately arose, he took up his bed and he went forth before them all in so much that they were amazed and glorified God. Oh, you'll glorify God when he pulls somebody up out of a wheelchair. Yes, you will. And this is what they said. We never saw it on this fashion. We need the Lord to do something on a Sunday night in August that we can walk out saying we never saw it like that before. We, we've, never, we've never witnessed any thing like that don't don't make me sermonize tonight so four men in their faith four men in their faith caused Jesus to do something that this group of people have never seen we've never seen it on this fashion in Luke chapter 5 and verse 26 they were all amazed and they glorified God same account in the gospel of Luke They glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. I'm tired of coming to church and seeing predictable things. I'd like to see something, something strange. I don't know who it is, but it's highly possible that somebody's faith is about to bring revelation of God that hasn't been seen before. And it's, come on, at some point we gotta grow up and be the church. At some point, we've got to stop making excuses for God and make evident the evidence of our faith. Now watch what, watch what James watch what James said. He said, "For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead." Now we reverse that. We think it's the opposite. We think it's without the spirit and the body is dead, or without works and faith it's dead. But the faith is tied to the body, and the works are tied to the spirit. In other words, your faith has got to have some life to it. Your your faith can't be laying there as a dead corpse in your spirit. There's got to be something that ignites it. Now, I don't know what it is when we come into the house of the Lord. Most of us know each other. And if you're a guest here tonight, we welcome you and your home. We love you. We love you. We believe God's going to do something powerful in your life. I, I don't know what it is that we feel so insecure about making evident the evidence of our faith. We're afraid we're going to disrupt something. And we're afraid that we're going to embarrass ourselves. We're afraid that we're going to humiliate ourselves. But the people in the Bible, when they heard that Jesus was near, they cried out to him. They weren't concerned about what their friends and their neighbors were thinking about them. They were determined to make evident their faith.
Touch your neighbor and say, you got to do something. Here, here's what happens. Here's what happens with our... Here's what happens when we, we pray for the sick. People wandering up here, yeah. dawdling around. All right, okay. All right. Uh, all right. And people get prayed for. Glory, hallelujah. Praise God. I'll go back to my seat. But then there's some others up here that come up here for prayer. When I got prayed for earlier, I'm telling you, I felt the virtue of God hit me in the head and go right down through my body. And you know what I did after that? When I was walking back and forth here praying, saying, God, I know you're healing me right now. I feel the virtue. I feel the power. I feel your anointing going through my body. I'm not going to walk off like you didn't just do a miracle for me. Come on, at some point in time, uh, you got to wake up and say enough is to enough. And tonight I'm drawing a line in the sand. Uh, tonight is where it stops. Tonight, I'm walking out of here rejoicing. Tonight, I'm walking out of here claiming my healing. Uh, I'm not going to act. Like God didn't just respond to my faith. I see it getting on some of you. Here's what we do. You can be seated. Here's what we do. I'm trying to wake the rest of you up. Here's what we do. We get prayed for. Oh, are the symptoms still there? Well, the symptoms are still there. I guess it didn't happen. We'll come back Thursday night and try it again. No, no, no. When the word is spoken, he said, rise Take up thy bed and walk. That man could have laid there. I feel my help right now. That man could have laid there and said, but you don't understand, Jesus. My limbs won't move. My fingers are numb. The left side of my body is numb. He could have laid there in the stretcher and waited for the symptoms to dissipate. But instead, he responded to the word of God. And he got up and he picked up his stretcher and walked out of there. You got to respond to his word. I'm going to give you 15 seconds to respond to his word right quick. You got three more. You got two more. My God have mercy. Yeah. Now I got a little more word for the unbelievers. Matthew 9. Two blind men. Everybody say two blind men. Two blind men followed him crying. They weren't going, uh. So embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. I can't, I, I can't do this. No. They were crying. They were crying. Saying, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house. Anybody feel him in the house tonight? When he was coming to the house, the two blind men came to him. Jesus said unto them, believe ye that I am able to do this? Do you believe it? If Jesus stood in front of you tonight and asked you. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Oh, not me standing in front of you. If Jesus were standing in front of you, do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said unto him, Yeah, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, Watch, watch, watch. Not according to my, my authority, but according to your faith. According to your faith being unto you. He put the onus on them. If you can believe it, your eyes shall be open. And their eyes were open. Now, now the second thing I had them pray for. Now, uh, I'm going to leave this part out. I'm not going to, mm, I almost said something, but I'm not going to say it because I don't want to implicate people. But let, let's just say occasionally, well-meaning people come to me and say, hey, you probably need to get glasses. You need to get glasses. All my life I've had 20-20 vision. 
And yeah, I got I to gotta put it about six inches further than I used to put it out there to read it sometimes if the print's too small and the lighting's not right. I get that. But Josh Sturgeon, under my petition, in here at late night prayer twice in the last three years, I said, I want you to put your hands on me right now. I'm giving you permission to lay your hand on my head and command my eyes to be healed. And twice the Lord did it. Now, I don't know why about every nine or ten months it gets a little worse and a little worse. And it's really not that bad anymore, but it's gotten a little bit, a little bit worse. And I told him, I said, I want you to pray for my eyes. Because if God can heal a blind man, he can heal somebody with bad vision. You tell me what the difference is. I'm going to preach in this place right now that we serve the great physician, that he's able to do anything, that his power is able. Oh, I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. To the woman of Cana who sought mercy from the Lord. Well, I saw glasses coming off right there. Well, I didn't know I could believe that for that. Well, you tell me I can believe for that? He said, according to your faith, what does your faith believe? Not what his faith believes, but what does your faith believe? At some point, you've got to make your, make evident the evidence of your faith. To the woman of Cana, he sought mercy from the Lord for her daughter who was lying at home grievously vexed with the devil. And Jesus replied, after he had seen her persistent, everybody say persistent, and unwavering faith. In Matthew 15, then said Jesus, Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. You you missed that right there. He's not even saying, he's not even saying you need to know what my will is. He's saying, be it unto you according to you with your will. Whatever you got faith for, whatever you believe for. And if you believe that your daughter that's grieving, if you believe that your daughter that's grievously vexed with a devil that's at home can be delivered right now, then let it be so. And by the time you get home, you're gonna see a different girl. Don't you tell me, my God, don't you tell me God can't reach your kids? Don't you tell me God can't set your kids free? Don't you tell me he can't bring your backslid babies back to the church? Be it unto you according to your faith. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to glorify him right now. (laughs) The Bible said she was made whole from that very hour. Some of you going to get some strange phone calls. Mama. Can I come home, please? Can you come home? Why? I don't know why. But Sunday night, about 7.44 in the evening, something walked up in my room, and the devil that's had me bound, it let go of me. Mama, can I come home? Mama, can I come home? Come on. She was made whole from that very hour. Woman, woman, believe it.
Somebody needs to get a revelation right now. Like the blind man did when he heard that he was in the house. If Jesus ain't in this house right now, I don't think he's ever been in this house. But he's in this house. The woman with the issue of blood didn't even ask permission. She didn't ask him if it was his will. She didn't say to Jesus, would you please do this for me? She said, get out of my way. I need to get through. I know he don't have time. I know he's in a hurry, but I got to get to him. If I can touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be healed. I know it. That's what kind of Savior he is. Lift your hands right now. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I bind a belief in this place. I bind every form of doubt in this place. I bind every bit of fear in this place. I bind hopelessness. I bind depression. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of the devil. Let faith live. Let faith live. Let faith live. Don't stop praying. But he looked at her and he said, Woman, thy faith hath made thee whole. Not your doctrine, not your performance, not your prayer life, but your faith. What you believe me for, that has made you whole. I want to ask you, what do you believe him for right now? What do you believe him for? <laughs> 